what you got there. Little baby boy. Say hello, Azulus. That looks like a boat dog. It is a boat dog. <laughs> Zeus. Zeus the boat dog. So, yeah, we just got our newest crew member, Zeus. Hi, Zeus. Our brand new little doggy dog mm. for the boat. He's a Yorkshire Terrier and he's brand new. We like just got him. Hey, you. Oh my god, he's cute. You guys make a good pair. Good thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, so as you know, we're taking the mast off the boat as one of the first steps in getting it ready for the Bahamas. The main reason I'm taking the mast out is because some of the keel bolts that I need to tighten and replace the washers for are located under the mast step. So the mast has got to come down. Before I take the mast down, I need to de-rig the boat, take off all the running rigging. The first thing I did here was took off the uh, antenna for the SSB because that is on the backstay, so that had to come off. And next I'm going to be taking off rigging tape, and then I'm going to take all the running rigging lines and coil them up and get them ready for the mass removal, which we're doing on Saturday. I'm going to remove some rigging tape. That's kind of a rubbery rigging tape, so I gotta cut it with a knife. This rigging tape is on each one of these turnbuckles, and it's basically covering the little pins that are in here and making sure that when our running rigging is rubbing against this, it doesn't chafe up our lines. So I'm going to cut all this off so we can turn these turnbuckles for removing the mast. Alright, so I've now removed the pins from all of the turnbuckles. When we were ready to loosen these off, the pins won't be in the way. So because we have a hydraulic backstay, I had to let off the hydraulic a bit. We need to remove the table and the galley here, which I've just now done. So then I'm going to remove some of these floor panels here so I can get at the wires and everything that travels up the mast. All right, so I exposed this panel and accessed the inside of this part of the bilge. I need to disconnect all these wires that go up the mast. This whole array needs to be disconnected and reconnected back when I put the mast in this exact same way. So. I need to take some photos and record that. So I had to do some measurements to make sure that we could actually like pull this mast out on our crane. Uh, we only have like a 40 foot crane here at the club and it's like 67 feet from the top of the mast to the water line. But you don't lift the mast from the very top, you lift it from a point just below the second spreaders. This is the distance from the second spreaders all the way to the keel step, which is 36 feet and 4 inches. We need to bring the mast up at least seven feet, four inches to clear the deck. So roughly eight feet. That's just clearing the deck. Probably nine, 10 feet would be safer. And down here, you can see that I drew a picture of the crane. And I measured yesterday with a tape measure that from this hook to the top of this dock is 40 feet. And then at very low tide, where I went out and took another measurement of seven feet, eight inches from the top of the dock down to the water line where roughly our keel step is going to be here. So altogether, that's 47 feet and 8 inches if you subtract 36 feet 4 inches from 47 feet 8 inches I got 11 feet 4 inches I only needed 7 feet 4 inches minimum like 8 feet let's say to clear the dock it looks like we're going to have 11 feet so this is it today's the day we're going to remove the mast everything's ready to go just about we've moved from our dock over there to this dock over here with the crane that's used for removing your mast so you can tell here that the mast right now is higher than the crane and that was one of my main concerns and why I was doing the math like I showed you earlier. What we're doing here right now is waiting for the tide to drop so that the boat will be at its lowest point and once the boat is that low and we have that much more space we should be able to remove the mast. You got to watch these lines when, they, when you're on a dock that's fixed like this and not floating like those docks over there. So basically when the tide is dropping these lines are going to get tight and you have to let them off as you go. So you can't really like go anywhere you got to stay here and keep an eye on that. 
I'm going to be swinging that arm out soon and I'm going to be going up on my bosun's chair and up to about the second set of spreaders I'll attach the straps that will lift the mast. Put two wraps up there that's drop around. Two wraps, yeah. There we go. Hey guys, so as you can see, we got the mast down. We used this crane and we got it down yesterday and I just didn't have a chance to record anything after because the beers came out and we had quite a big crew. And that's just simply because we have such a large mast. This is it here. It's so heavy and so large that there was virtually nowhere else to move it without some kind of heavy equipment. Everybody kind of grabbed a piece and then we stuck these saw horses under it and we got it done. This is something that Noel and I aren't going to do very often. I think it's certainly not something we do every year. But what we did was we took one of the halyards and we ran it along here and just kind of did a half hitch every, I don't know, four to six feet or so. And that's simply just to keep the, the head stay, like the furling head stay and all the shrouds and everything attached to the mast so they don't go falling onto the pavement down here and to keep the, uh, the roller furler from bending. We're supposed to get some rain so I covered some of these crucial bits. This radar dome is really old and the seal in here looks dried out, it doesn't look so good so I wanted to cover that with a bag. Down here on this end we've got lots of lines on here holding everything in the ends of all of my stays and their connection points all held up really tight with these ropes to keep them from flopping around and my roller furler down here also connected the same way this is my spar tight joint not all boats have this our boat has a spar tight that secures the mass where the deck and the mass meet this had to be banged up with a hammer kind of just to dislodge it and when we go back in this wedge will again be bang back down. The one and only thing that went wrong, and it's really minor, is that the VHF cable, when we were pulling out of the boat, the end of it had caught somewhere inside and we didn't notice, and it just popped the little end off the VHF cable, which is no big deal, I'll just splice it back on. This huge mass and this big operation and all those people, and the one and only thing that actually went wrong was the smallest little fixable. We were very lucky, it was a good day, but it was a lot of work. We're gonna make sure that when we put this back up that everything is done and is going to last for years. You can, you can do, do it. it! Jump! You can do it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do it, buddy. What's the pollen? I know. Yes, you got it! Don't be scared! Come on! <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like... Okay. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like our videos, please don't forget to subscribe and if you want, leave a like or a comment below because we read them. See you later. Thank you. Get him! <laughs> I knew it! I knew he was Wipe gonna out. Get... get him! Get Charlie! <laughs> <laughs>
go, go, go. Go, go, go.